Before I met the Lord, I was enjoying life as far as sports, uh, fishing, hunting. My dad and I used to do a lot of fishing, and uh, we did hunting from time to time. But uh, I was into baseball quite a bit when I was young. I was a pitcher and played uh, on several high school teams. So uh, what I uh, was looking for was what I could do to make my life more meaningful and I began to watch Billy Graham evangelistic programs on television and one night I decided to give my heart to the Lord so I knelt down in front of my TV set uh, there at my house my parents house 
and gave my heart to Jesus that I wanted to live for Him for the rest of my life. Before that time, I'd had a lot of things in my life that I wasn't real proud of, so I decided to give my life to Jesus. Now, uh, I became interested in messages from churches and also at the music hall, George Burnside, he was an Australian uh, evangelist and he traveled to, to Houston and I watched his uh, evangelistic series and gave my life to the Lord as far as an Adventist uh, Christian uh, became interested in wanting to be baptized into the Adventist church, Seventh-day Adventist church. So after I became a member of the church, I felt maybe I might go into maybe engineering or something that would be along my dad's line. He was in petroleum engineering type of uh, business. So I studied petroleum engineering for several uh, years, but finally I changed my major from petroleum engineering to theology. I felt the Lord was calling me into uh, the ministry. So after I finished uh, my studies in that, I decided I wanted to be a literature evangelist after I became a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And I did that for about 18 years as a call porter. And then after that, I decided that I wanted to uh, become a member of the, the Adventist Church and to start uh, doing work start doing work that I can uh, help see the church grow. The cross of Christ represents living my life for Him, crucifying the flesh to the, uh, the blessings of the Lord by following Him. Crucifying the flesh, living for Jesus, and not letting my life be controlled by the things of this life, but be controlled by a spiritual calling. So after I became a Christian, Jesus was a completely a new person to me. And I didn't live to, to bless self, I lived to bless others. So after I became a member of the church, uh, I graduated uh, in theology after uh, several years at Southwestern Adventist University. It was Southwestern Junior College for uh, quite a few years. And now that I've become a Christian, uh, each day life means much more to me just getting up every day and walking with Him. I find an adventure in living for Him. My life now is to continue to serve Him, and to win others to Christ. So I was brought up in a Christian home. My parents took me and my sisters to church. They taught us to read the Bible, to pray, to look for ways to help other people. And the beautiful part about growing up in a Christian home is that I felt like I was somewhat or usually connected to Jesus. When I was asked to talk about my conversion, I said I don't feel like there was one big part of my life that was apart from God, and now I have a big part of my life that is with God. But this is how I feel about conversion for people like me. I feel like conversion is something that happens daily in my life. Every day, getting up, going back to God, He's always faithfully right there, ready to hear what I have to say, ready to be there and speak words to me. So several years ago, um, an example of God's faithfulness to me, I was going through a very dark time in my life where I felt very alone, felt abandoned and felt um, very sad about things that were happening in my life. And I turned to my Bible and opened my Bible to Isaiah 54. And that chapter spoke to me so personally at that moment that there was a God who was going to stand there right beside me. He was going to be faithful to me. 
he was going to provide for me and I didn't have to feel like I was alone. And I heard and read God's words to me in that chapter that day and the next day and the next every day for several weeks, I would go back to that chapter and reread it and reread it and reread it, hearing God's love for me and his faithfulness to me and beautiful remembrances of those of those days come back to me every time I go back and read that chapter I remember how God was faithful to me so when I think about conversion I think about daily converting my life to meet his standard meeting with him day by day because he's faithful and he's right there ready to hear what I have to say ready to speak to my heart um, a famous verse that talks about God's faithfulness is found in Lamentations Lamentations 3 says, Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. He is so faithful. He's right there, ready to speak to our hearts when we open our hearts to him every day. I was brought up as part of a Christian family. My mom and my dad, they always had stuff to do with church. My dad was a head elder, my mom was the Sabbath school superintendent, and later on she became the school teacher. And I remember all these things that we had to do uh, as part of our Christian life. And I kept thinking, okay, there's some people out there who have been in this journey for over 20, 30, maybe 50 years. And uh, what exactly does it mean to be a Christian? I remember once when a pastor came to preach in our church and the pastor said, in his sermon, he was asking this question, have you been, have you been converted already? Do you remember the day when you got your conversion? And I could not answer that question. And the pastor said this way, you will not notice, you probably won't figure out until the day when you have a personal experience with God. So he was linking conversion with a personal experience with God. And I kept thinking, well, what a teenager, 13, 14 years old, have to do with this experience with God? Because in my mind, an experience with God should be something like what happened to Paul. What happened to Peter trying to walk on the water? Paul coming on the road to Damascus. And I kept thinking, is it necessary for me to have an experience like that so I will have conversion? But in, as a matter of fact, about 25 years later, I think I, I got my conversion. It was an experience that I had with God that I keep looking, trying to compare with other moments. I just cannot find anything else to compare. That's the moment when I felt that, okay, this is probably the conversion because the real experience with God happened. But then I found out later that conversion, it must happen more than once. In other words, you gotta be daily. It's from yesterday to today, from today to tomorrow, from tomorrow to next week, we got to convert again to God every single day. That's the way that God prefers. That's the way how things work. We deliver to Him our anxieties. And we deliver to Him also the moments when we are happy. The moments when we have things that we rejoice about. This is conversion. You change your life from one direction to another direction. But guess what? We got to change every day. That's what conversion is about. We change every day. We keep changing by His grace, by His power.